Hey guys, how you going? My name is Dom and in this video um, we're going to be uh, taking a look at the animation end event within JavaScript. Um, so as the name implies, uh, this event is going to fire off when a CSS animation has finished or completed. Okay, so um, essentially we're going to be creating a CSS animation and then using the JavaScript to of course detect when it has finished. So let's go inside the text editor right here and begin on the HTML. Let's just create a new div with an ID of box. Okay, and um, for the um, for the CSS, we'll just add a bit of an example uh, animation to actually work with. So uh, let's firstly give it a position of absolute. Let's give it a top of 150 px, a left of 40 px, and a width of 75. Same goes for the height and a background of red. So I'm going to save this and refresh real quickly here. And we have this right here. So we're going to make the box go from here to the right side of the page. So uh, back inside here, uh, let's specify the animation property. And this can be uh, something like my animation. Um, it's going it, to gonna go for 1.5 seconds. It's going to have a forwards uh, fill mode. Basically, this just means that it's going to um, finish and stay in the current position. And it will have a half second delay right there. So to actually define this animation, we can create a new keyframes here and call this my animation. And we can say from. It's going to go from a left of 40 px and a border radius of nothing to a left of uh, calc 100 uh, vertical width or viewport width uh, subtracted 115 px. Uh, so basically 40 from the right side and a border radius of 50% to create a circle. So let's just save this here and refresh the page and we're going to work with this animation right here. Okay, so um, yeah, let's go inside the JavaScript now and uh, do the very simple um, uh, event handler here. So we can first begin by getting a reference to the box. So we can make a new constant here called box equal to of course, uh, document .get element by ID. we can pass in here box. And then we can simply just say box dot add event and listener. We're going to listen, of course, for the animation end event. All right. And when that fires off, we are going to simply alert and say box has moved all the way. And that's all there is to it. So I can save this and refresh the page and we get the message right there box has moved all the way so um, that is how you use the animation end um, event obviously here the main benefit of this is you're able to execute more javascript um, once the animation has been completed so um, this really helps when you're designing user interfaces or even uh, possibly uh, creating javascript games and one more benefit is that you define the length of the animation in the CSS. You can make this five seconds and the JavaScript doesn't need to change. So of course, I'm going to save this and refresh. And of course, it's still going to work. So, you know, previously, before we had um, CSS3 animations and the animation end event, uh, I believe we used to, you know, have to type in like 5,000 um, seconds or 5,000 uh, milliseconds, for example, to um, create this sort of thing. Now it's all done in the CSS. Um, so, of course, uh, the whole uh, don't repeat yourself concept applying right here. And while we are here, we may as well look at the animation start event. So, I'm going to copy this down here and paste it down here and say animation start. So, a very similar thing, except this one is going to, of course, execute when the animation starts. So we can say here, box is moving and save this and refresh. And of course, we get here, box is moving, box has moved all the way. All right, and that is the animation end and also the animation start event within JavaScript. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.